pi. Let's look into the relationship between the air pressure and volume. Why do you dress like that? I'll tell you later, okay? Because it made me look like a rapper. Listen up. Yo, yo, P times V equals NLT. P times V equals NLT, NLT. P times V equals NLT, NLT. Long, long time ago, when I was a student like you, my physics teacher taught me the boys' law in one lesson, and I memorized PV equals to PV. And another lesson, my teacher taught me the Charles law, which is relating the volume and temperature together. In the third lesson, I learned the pressure law, which relate the pressure and temperature together. Look at this equation. My brain was overloaded. I spent all my brain cell to memorize this, yet I cannot memorize them properly. In the fourth lesson, my teachers told me, oh, actually there is an equation combining all these three, and this is called the ideal gas law. PV equals to NLT. Yo, yo, P times V. So I decided that when I become a physics teacher, I'm going to teach my student after the first lesson, not in the fourth lesson. First of all, you have to understand the notation. So you should know P is pressure, V is volume. As for NLT, N is the number of molecules in a unit, so-called mode that you will learn in chemistry, not physics. But the basic idea of N is simply if you have more molecules, it will increase. If you have less molecules, it will decrease. If you have a fixed amount of molecules, then it does not change. R is just a constant, just like pi is universal and is always the same. Finally, T is the temperature in a so-called unit Kelvin not Celsius. Well, we'll talk about this in the future. So now let me show you how you can use this to help you to memorize all these three laws. So first of all, for the Boyle's law that we have learned, it actually assume N and T are constant. It doesn't change throughout the whole experiment. And so in that case, and let's not forget the R is also constant as well. So this whole thing is going to be a constant. And therefore, PV is a constant. That means P1 times V1 is always a constant and therefore equals to P2 times V2. And that's how you get the equation, Boyle's law. If you don't trust me, you can go back to the simulation and try to change the number of molecules by maybe pumping more. So now you can see the pressure is around 15 atm. And if I pump more, obviously you can see the pressure will increase much more. Also for the temperature, if you change it, you can see at the bottom, you can heat them up and now you can see the pressure would increase as well. So I, without changing the volume, uh, if you only change the temperature, of course, it will also affect the pressure. And so that's why for Boyle's law, it required you to have the fixed amount of gas molecule and also the fixed temperature as well. Now, if we try to change the control variable, so for example, if we try to keep P and N to be constant, then you have this constant, this constant, and this constant. And if you mathematically move them on one side, so P over N out equals to T over V, or you can also do V over T equals to N out over P. Well, this is the same thing. And so you can see all these three things will equal to constant. And therefore, their product will also be constant. And that also means V over T will be a constant. And therefore, we can obtain this equation. V1 over T1 will equal to another ratio of V over T at another time. And so similarly, 
you would also be able to make another thing that could be constant because other than temperature pressure you can also have guess what the V to be constant of course the uh, gas molecule to be constant as well and so now we have this constant this constant and this constant and so you can rearrange it so that it become P over T equals to N R over V and so again these three each of them are constant and therefore when they multiply it is also a constant and therefore the ratio of P over T would also be a constant here at one time to another time and so for Charles law and pressure law uh, these will be introduced in the thermal physics chapter later on so don't worry you don't have to use it for this chapter yet uh, however I would like you to know uh, more about Boyle's law and what the assumptions behind that's all for this video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in the next video bye yo